Who are the real Jews? We're going to do a study on this. We're going to try to get through this thing pretty quickly. Uh, there's a whole lot of confusion on this subject, believe me. Romans chapter 9. Let's go there. A lot of our reading will be in the book of Romans and the book of Revelation. Because both places talk a lot about the Jews. Romans chapter 9. And uh, we'll begin in verse 6. Read down to verse 13. Okay, very important verse here coming up. Romans 9 verse 6. Not as though the word of God hath taken effect, taken none effect, for they are not all Israel which are of Israel. Uh, just because people live in Israel doesn't mean that they are Jews. They're not all of Israel. Who is Israel? Israel is Jacob. Uh, back in the Old Testament, you study it. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Jacob is also called Israel by God. All right? So they're not all Israel which are of Israel. Okay? Neither because they are the seed of Abraham are they all children, but in Isaac shall thy seed be called. Was Ishmael um, that he had through Abraham and Hagar, did they did they had they had the son Ishmael? Is Ishmael counted to be of the promise? No. But he is the son of Abraham. Hmm. Uh, he's not part of the promise. Verse 8. That is, they which are the children of the flesh, these are not the children of God. But the children of the promise are counted for the seed. For this is the word of promise. At this time will I come, and Sarah shall have a son. And not only this, but when Rebekah also had conceived by one, even by our father Isaac, for the children being not yet born, neither having done any good or evil, that the purpose of God, according to election, might stand, not of works, but of him that calleth. It was said unto her, The elder shall serve the younger. As it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. What do you have? Well, you have two brothers there. But if you understand the symbology, the spiritual symbology there, Jacob is pure. Esau is mingled. Go back and study the lives of them. Esau, when he saw that it displeased his parents, that he was marrying daughters uh, that were basically of Ishmael, um, he went out and he did it more. The daughters of Heth, the Bible talks about. He went out and he, and he saw it was upsetting to his parents. And so he went out and he did it more. And what else did Esau do? He despised his birthright. See, Jews are the children of promise. They are promised land, the land of Israel. But there are those that go out and they mingle themselves and they mix with other races for political or financial gain. They try to do that to you know, build their own kingdom without Jesus Christ. And as a result, they become like Esau. Jacob have I loved and Esau have I hated. And if you study it, uh, there were Jews, mingled papal Juden, Jews that served the Pope, in other words, in the Nazi movement. Some of the higher up guys in the Nazi movement were mingled papal Juden. Huh. But they were persecuting Jews. Were they all real Jews? Some were, I believe. But a lot weren't. Hmm. Let me show you. Revelation chapter 2. What you have to be careful of is these people that come out and they say, there are no Jews. There's no such thing as a Jew. The church has replaced Israel. No, it hasn't. No, it hasn't. I have the studies to prove it. Don't be lazy. Go look at my studies on replacement theology. Um, I've disproved all of that stuff. Don't waste your time in the comments. You need to study this more. I have studied it. Okay, you haven't studied it if you believe in, Revel or in uh, replacement theology. Revelation chapter 2, verse 9. I know thy works in tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. They say that they are Jews, but they're not. It doesn't say they are Jews, but because they didn't accept Jesus and they're over there and the Rothschilds founded Israel, therefore they're not real Jews because they're, they are real Jews, but they're no screwball. That's not how it works. There are people that are in Israel that are not of Israel. They're not descended from Jacob. They're mingled. That's why the Bible calls them miry clay. Miry clay mixed with iron. And for a long time, I, I was espousing some of the dumb theories out there. Well, the fifth kingdom is iron and miry clay mixed together. So it's going to be sort of hybrid angel people thing. 
That's not what the Bible teaches. The iron is obviously a reference to Rome, the Roman Catholic system. The miry clay, if you look it up, the only other reference to miry clay in your King James Bible is to Israel. Okay, It's talking about the mingling of Roman and the papal Juden, the Jews' popes. That's what it's talking about. I've done the studies to prove it. You, well, I don't agree. Did you watch my studies? I don't have time to. Okay. He that answereth the matter before he heareth it, it is folly and shame unto him. May the Lord rebuke you out there. If you aren't going to take the time to do the studies and the scriptures and things, which I show, it's here. It's available for free. I'm not saying $20 per video or something like that. Charging for every video. Uh, go watch it for free. And all the technologies and everything that are out there right now, you can you know, listen to it remotely. You can download it as an MP3 and listen to the file and whatever else while you're out working or running or doing whatever. You have no excuse. They get so sick and tired of people like that. Revelation 3, verse 9. We'll see a similar thing here. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet and to know that I have loved thee. There are fake Jews. Can we establish that? Yes. But if there are fake Jews, by default, there would be real Jews. Otherwise, there's no point in the time of Jacob's trouble. <laughs> uh, there's going to be all this stuff happening over there in Jerusalem. There's going to be a false uh, Messiah that shows up, this Antichrist guy and, and whatever else. Who's he coming for? The two witnesses come back and they're there prophesying in the streets and doing signs and wonders. Moses and Elijah, the two witnesses there, which I've proved in other studies. Okay, again, don't give me any hassle about that. Um, shut up in the comments. You don't know what you're talking about. I proved it. Okay, um, but what's the point if there are no real Jews? God's going to bring in a new covenant and give it to who? Fake Jews? Oh, that's right, white Europeans that came through Europe and then they're, they're the true Jews or whatever. You're stupid if you believe that. You're stupid. There's no nice way for me to put it. I'm sorry. It's dumb. I've debunked it years and years ago. Okay? Well, no, it's actually the black Africans. The black Africans are the true Jews. Okay, they get over to Israel. It's so simple. You, you're the real Jews. Okay, it's your land over there. Go take it. They're just Illuminati people over there. They're Khazars. They're, they're, they're Ashkenazi. They're, they're Sephardic. They're this, they're that. Whatever. Okay, all right. Then God will protect you as you go take the land for yourself. Go get it. Coward. <laughs> I mean, if I believed I was a real Jew, I'd go over to Israel. It's a land of promise. I'd go over there and say, hey, you people over here, you usurpers, you synagogue of Satan, get out. But you see, I'm not a Jew. I'm a Christian. Okay, Romans chapter 2. I covered this in another one of my studies here I did earlier today, but we'll cover it again because I know where the wing nuts go. You, you can't surprise me, okay? I understand the systems out there. What about Romans chapter 2, verse 28 and 29? Huh, Denlinger? What about that? Let's go there. Romans chapter 2, verse 28. For he is not a Jew which is one outwardly, neither is that circumcision which is outward in the flesh. But he is a Jew which is one inwardly, and circumcision is that of the heart in the spirit and not in the letter, whose praise is not of men but of God. Okay? We see right there, it says there are no Jews left. Oh, it doesn't say that. Keep reading. Chapter 3. What advantage then hath the Jew? <laughs> or what profit is there of circumcision? See, Romans chapter 2, verses 28 through 29, if you actually studied the scriptures, you would realize that Paul is just simply saying they're trying to say that they have some special advantage and that they are automatically saved or whatever. And, and Paul's saying, no, you don't get automatic salvation. That's what's going on in Romans 2, 28 and 29. All right. But every replacement theology wingnut out there, they stop at verse 29. They don't go on to chapter 3, verse 1. Okay? Always remember, a text without a context is a pretext. Continuing here, Romans chapter 3, verse 2. What advantage then hath the Jew? Verse 2. Much every way, chiefly because that unto them were committed the oracles of God. For what if some did not believe? Shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? God forbid, yea, let God be true, but every man a liar, as it is written, uh, that thou mightest be justified in thy sayings, and mightest overcome when thou art judged. But if our unrighteousness commend the righteousness of God, what shall we say? 
Is God unrighteous who taketh vengeance? I speak as a man. God forbid, for then how shall God judge the world? What's the context here? It's about the Jews, isn't it? Why does it say about how will God judge the world? When is God going to judge the whole world? That would be the time of Jacob's trouble. Jacob's trouble. You know, Israel. Uh-huh. Yeah. Maybe you'll get it eventually. I realize if you're lost out there, this is just going right over your head. And you're writing your nasty little comments and whatever else. Sorry. Uh, Romans chapter 11. Romans chapter 11. I'm trying to get through this study quickly because I know that the attention span of replacement theology people is not very long. Kind of like a two-year-old playing with a toy. You know, you want your little video with all the special effects and whatever and, and the dramatic music and dun-dun-dun, see, I Schofield was controlled by the Jewish Illuminati and he brought in this thing of Zionism and the Rothschilds financed him and dispensationalism was created by the Jesuits. Dun-dun-dun, you know. Yeah, you're, you're rather stupid. <laughs> Read the scriptures. Okay. Romans chapter 11, verses 1 through 5. I say then, hath God cast away his people? God forbid. For I also am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham of the tribe of Benjamin. I remember uh, Nutty Stephen Anderson the one time, the little replacement theology, who guy who actually is a mingled papal Juden. It's kind of funny. He actually did it you know, DNA testing and whatever else, and they found that he actually has Jewish blood in him. But somehow some of you people still listen to him. I remember this other guy I was working with him, um, Ben the Baptist, is what he was called. Benjamin Naim was his real name. He's a Jew, <laughs> you know. And I wrote it one time and I said, uh, why don't you tell people that you're a Jew in the comments? And this one guy said, you know, where did you hear that? That's ridiculous. And I said, ask him. Ask him. And Benjamin Naim wrote and he said, yeah, I'm a Jew. But he's coming out with all this anti-Semitic stuff. They're scamming you, okay? But uh, Stephen Andersnake said the one time, he said, he said, after the Old Testament, he said, God is done with the nation of Israel in the Old Testament. And he said, you never see another mention of Jews or tribe of this or anything else in the New Testament. Romans chapter 11, verse 1. Okay, verse 2. God hath not cast away his people, which he foreknew. Watch ye not what the scripture saith of Elias, how he maketh intercession to God against Israel, saying, Lord, they have killed thy prophets and dig down thine altars, and I am left alone, and they seek my life. But what saith the answer of God unto him? I have reserved to myself 7,000 men who have not bowed the, the knee to the image of Baal. Even so then at this present time also there is a remnant according to the election of grace. There's a remnant. There are Jews that are saved. Okay, and um, there will be a remnant that gets saved out of the time of Jacob's trouble. And what you think about that is irrelevant. Romans chapter 11, verse 25 through 28. The Bible says here, For I would not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery, lest ye should be wise in your own conceits, that blindness in part is happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. And so all Israel shall be saved, as it is written, There shall come out of Zion the Deliverer, and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. For this is my covenant unto them, when I shall take away their sins. As concerning the gospel, they are enemies for your sakes, but as touching the election, they are beloved for, their, for the Father's sakes. Okay, I've gone through this. I know people are going through these scriptures over and over again. Yeah, because a lot of people don't get it. A lot of people, I just see this thing, this hatred towards anything called Jew. Well, you have to remember, they're not all Israel, which are of Israel. Okay? Um, uh, how's the verse go? About the, they, them which say that they are Jews and are not. Okay? Revelation 2.9, Revelation 3.9. The blasphemy of them which say that they are Jews and are not. There's the synagogue of Satan. Just because somebody says that they're a Jew doesn't mean that they're actually a Jew. Okay? It's very important to understand that. All right, now let's go back to Ezekiel chapter 36. So we have established so far, if you've been following along in the scriptures, we have established the fact that they are not all Israel which are of Israel. They, if Just because somebody says I'm a Jew doesn't mean that they're a Jew. There's people that are part of the synagogue of Satan. You have Esau, which God hates. Who is Esau? 
Esau is someone who mingled his seed. He forsook his birthright. He despised his birthright. Okay, the Jews, don't intermarry with other people. Stay pure to your kindred. Okay, that's what you're supposed to do. Why? Because there is a promise there to the physical seed. You breed that out through marrying all kinds of other people to try to get into money, things, and whatever else. You're no longer relying on the Lord. You're relying on your own connections and things. And you're forsaking that inheritance that's there. You are Esau in God's sight. Okay, Esau is not white men or something. Okay, Esau was a, was a man there, Jacob's brother, and he could have had some great inheritance. But he forsook it to serve his own belly. Hmm, like it says about over in the book of James. James written to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad. See, there's a lot more that I can just cover here in one study. It takes years to study the scriptures and really search the scriptures and get grounded in the scriptures. But you just want to come along with your little YouTube thing and, and you know, hey, I, I watched a five minute video and I'm convinced. I understand C.I. Schofield was an agent of the Vatican or excuse me, of the Zionists and and the Rothschilds financed him. And I just saw this, and the, the you know, we're the true Jews. There are no real Jews. All the Jews over in Israel, they're all fake servants of Satan. They all just do this. And that. You're stupid. You are very ignorant. Okay. Well, then you're defending the Jews. Not at all. I judge the Jews. Okay. I'm supposed to raise up my voice like a trumpet and show the people of Israel their sin and spare not. And I'm going to be doing a lot more of that in the future because we're heading towards the time of Jacob's trouble. So what better group for me to kick than Jacob? Okay. The people of Israel. In other words, Jacob is Israel. Get them ready for that judgment that's coming. Ezekiel 36, verse 16, down through verse 24. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, when the house of Israel dwelt in their own land, they defiled it by their own way and by their doings. Their way was before me as the uncleanness of a removed woman. Wherefore, I poured my fury upon them for the blood that they had shed upon the land and for their idols wherewith they had polluted it. Is there any blood being shed right now in Israel? Particularly in Gaza? Yeah. And, you know, it's that's their land. I believe that it's the Jews' land there in Gaza. But why are they kicking the Palestinians out? Why? Because they want to make resorts there. They want to make more money. <laughs> okay? Not a good thing. Not a righteous thing that they're doing. Oh, but Hamas attacked and whatever else back there October 7th, you know, last year or whatever, almost a year ago. They attack. They have no choice. They have to get rid of the Hamas terrorists and whatever. Okay, that was called a false flag operation. The Israeli military stood down. The IDF stood down, let them come in, do some bad things and whatever else as a pretext for war. Okay, study the whole, uh, what is the um, art of war thing and whatever else. That's what you do. Okay, this is an age old tactic. Let the enemy come in. You have a pretext to go to war, to fight, to take their land from them and whatever else, take their resources. That's all that's going on. All right. But they shed blood upon their land. Verse 19. And I scattered them among the heathen and they were dispersed through the countries according to their way and according to their doings. I judged them. God kicks them out of the land. They're there when God comes down, manifest in the flesh as Jesus Christ. And he's there and he says, you know, the, John the Baptist, behold the king of the Jews. Here he is. He's, he's the king. You know, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The king's here. God manifest in the flesh. And what do they say? Oh, isn't this the carpenter's son? Oh, this guy? Oh, the, not him. Oh, yeah, he's raising people from the dead and he's restoring, you know, eyesight to the blind and causing the maimed to be whole and everything, but I don't know. We would see a sign from thee. <laughs> and Jesus is saying, you know, there shall no sign be given to you. You're an adulterous and evil generation. I'm not giving you any more signs than what you've already seen. Pretty sick. Uh, verse 20, And when they entered into the heathen, whither they went, they profaned my holy name when they said to them, These are the people of the Lord and are gone forth out of his land. Okay? Jews coming into the different nations, when they're dispersed, they're scattered out throughout the different nations. What did they do? Did they bring righteous standards with them? Did they bring the name of Jehovah God into the, 
nation and show a, a very righteous standard? No, they went in there and they used usury and all kinds of other things, corrupted the culture, corrupted the morality of the people, did all kinds of evil things, intermarried with the people, given up their inheritance like Esau did. Terrible, absolutely terrible. That's why the wrath of God is coming upon them. But I had pity for mine holy name, which the house of Israel had profaned among the heathen, whither they went. It's kind of funny. The Lord has pity for his holy name. And you get all these dumb Jews today, these pagans, and they're going around saying, Hashem this, Hashem that. The name, the name. Uh, no, his name's Jehovah. It's plainly spelled out in the Old Testament and Jesus Christ in the New Testament. But they'll use the name Jesus Christ as profanity, but they don't call upon the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord Jesus Christ. I mean, if you're not getting this stuff, please get saved, okay? The tie-ins here are so amazing, you should just be saying, wow, the Word of God is amazing. I don't get how you're tying it all together. Well, then you're lost. I don't know how else to say it to you, all right? Uh, verse 22, Therefore say unto the house of Israel, Thus saith the Lord God, I do not this for your sakes, O house of Israel, but for mine holy name's sake, which ye have profaned among the heathen, whither ye went. And I will sanctify my great name, which was profaned among the heathen, which ye have profaned in the midst of them. And the heathen shall know that I am the Lord, saith the Lord God, when I shall be sanctified in you before their eyes. And I will take you from among the heathen and gather you out of all countries and will bring you into your own land. What a bummer that's going to be for these uh, mingled papal Juden, the Jews of the Pope. Can you imagine that? They're here in America right now. We're going to bring in the FedNow program. We're going to have central bank digital currencies. We're going to have smart cities. We're going to have our boy Elon Musk, and he's going to make smart cars. We're going to have smart cities, 6G technology. Everything's going to be just so-so. It's going to be great. And all of a sudden, they're going to start losing war after war after war, and the economy is going to crash, and the society is going to break down, and all these other things will happen, and they'll say, what do we do now? Go back to Israel. The land of promise. The Lord's going to tie things up. Like the scriptures say. You want to see the truth? You'll see it. Verse 25. Then will I sprinkle clean water upon you, and ye shall be clean from all your filthiness, and from all your idols will I cleanse you. A new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will will I put within you, and I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you an heart of flesh. All right? Um, Christ in you, the hope of glory, the Bible talks about. You say, well, no, it'd be the Holy Spirit in you. Yeah, Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit is the same being. Two different parts. They're not the same in terms of the Holy Spirit and Jesus Christ are the exact same thing. No, you have spirit and body. The whole, God the Father is the soul. Okay, man is made in the image of God after his likeness. Man has a body, a soul, and a spirit. Three in one person. There are not three persons of Brian Denlinger standing out here right now. You're looking at my body. Okay, inside is my soul. Up here, the spirit of my mind. Three. Three, but just one. God is three, but just one. The Jews say that the Trinity is an idol. Amen. Exactly. You are 100% correct. <laughs> okay, there's no God the Son or God the Holy Spirit. That's heresy. That's blasphemy. God the Father? Yes. But Jesus Christ is God and the Holy Spirit is God, but there's only one God. Understand that. It's three parts to one person, one God, with one God title. All right? <laughs> okay, Galatians chapter 4. So we know, back to the New Testament now, we know that the Jews, the Jewish people, are connected to land. All right? That is very clear. But just because there's somebody in that land doesn't mean that they're actually Jewish. They might, they, a lot of them have forsaken the actual promises and things that are there to the physical descendants because, like Esau, they sold their birthright for a mess of pottage. To please their flesh. They serve their own belly. Galatians chapter 4 verse 21. Down to verse 31. Let's read that. Tell me. 
Ye that desire to be under the law, do ye not hear the law? People out there that try to get under the Noahide thing or the 613 commandments of the, you know, Torah observant Jews. Right, yeah. For it is written that Abraham had two sons, the one by a bondmaid, the other by a free woman. But he who was, after, he, he who was of the bondwoman was born after the flesh, but he of the free woman was by promise. Which things are an allegory? For these are the two covenants, the one from the Mount Sinai, which gendereth to bondage, which is Agar. New Testament word for Hagar. For this Agar in Mount, is Mount Sinai in Arabia, and answereth to Jerusalem, which now is, and is in bondage with her children. Palestinians and the Jews, there in the land. But Jer Jerusalem, which is above, is free, which is the mother of us all. For it is written, Rejoice thou barren that bearest not, break forth and cry, thou that travailest not. For the desolate hath many more children than she which hath an husband. Now we, brethren, as Isaac was, are the children of promise. But as then, he that was born after the flesh persecuted him that was born after the spirit, even so it is now. Nevertheless, what saith the scripture? Cast out the bondwoman, and her son, for the son of the bondwoman shall not be heir with the son of the free woman. So then, brethren, we are not children of the bondwoman, but of the free. Um, the Lord's going to get rid of the children of the bondwoman out of that land over there. Now, the Jews are trying to do it without the, Lord help, the Lord's help. And they're doing it for the wrong purposes. Like I said, the Jews are over there and they're saying, we want to make, you know, um, resorts and all this other stuff and things. That's not right. It isn't right. Um, but what we're going to see in the future is we're going to see the Jews are going to be brought back to that land so that they see the signs and wonders of the book of Revelation. And then at that point in time, the Lord is going to come back and he will restore that land of Israel, true land of Israel there. But the Jews, what they're going to find in the end times is that their power and influence shrinks more and more. And pretty soon they're all going to be fleeing back to Israel as quick as they can. And that's going to be their last stand before the Lord comes down and intervenes and saves a remnant of them and brings in his new covenant with them. That's the future. You say, well, I don't agree with that. Well, the, the church is Israel. We are the true Jews. Okay, well, then that's your future. You better get over to Israel because you're going to have less influence in whatever country you're in. And so you're going to need to go back to Israel and you'll just be a remnant there. And you're going to have to go through a lot of things and other countries will hate you. And then Jesus will come down and give his new covenant to you as a Jewish Christian, the church. Um, the church has to have the new covenant when he takes away their sins. Uh, no, you see, you have to look at the totality of scripture. You have to understand theology on a very deep level before you just go and you start shooting yourself in the foot and whatever else because you're listening to a bunch of cult leaders that didn't really understand how to rightly divide the word of truth. The church replaced Israel. Do you realize how many doctrinal problems you come up with when you get into that kind of thing? Okay. And we'll end it in Galatians 3, verse 28 and 29. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female, for ye are all one in Christ Jesus. And if ye be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Okay. Um, who are the real Jews? Well, uh, that is difficult to answer. Because there is a lot of people in Israel that are not of Israel. They're not of Jacob. Descended from Jacob. They're of Esau. They're mingled people. They see Israel right now as a good chance to make money. There's a lot of usury going on. A lot of... Uh, the stock market scheming, banker stuff, whatever the Jesuits, there's a lot of that stuff going on and there are people in there and they might be one-tenth Jewish or something or whatever else, but they've intermarried and they've mingled and they've done all these other things to try to come up in power. They're Hollywood people. There's all this stuff. And you see, the time of Jacob's trouble is that time of purification. So how do you know? Oh, I don't know. The thing about the, Jesus saying it, there's gives a parable about wheat and tares. And uh, they say, the angels come along and they say, should we rip up the tares? Should we pull them up? And Jesus says, no, let them both grow together until the time of the end. Then I'll come down and I'll separate. I'll sort it out. It's a mess right now. Terrible mess. Who are the real Jews? I don't know. I've gotten into the habit of somebody says, I'm a Jew. I say, okay, which tribe are you part of? 
well, uh, 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 how much European blood do you have in you? How much African blood? How much whatever? Have you intermarried with Gentiles? Can you really say that you're of a certain tribe then? Hmm? Well, we can find rule, uh, exceptions to overthrow the rule. There was this guy, he intermarried, and this one in there. Oh, you're on some pretty shaky ground. Okay. Um, just because you're in Israel doesn't mean that you are of Israel, of Jacob. So the Lord's going to sort it out. He'll sort it all out. But if you really want to be dumb and prove how stupid you are, then try to jump in there and, and get in and kind of wedge yourself in there and say, well, I'm actually part of that whole thing. <laughs> you want to do that? Help yourself. Have at it. As for me, I'm happy being a Christian. Okay. I'm a Gentile. No Jewish blood in me. Sorry. Uh, my older sister went and got a DNA test and everything. 100% European descent. All right. I'm not Jewish. I know, you know, well, you look somewhat Jewish and you act somewhat Jewish and whatever else. Well, whatever. Uh, can't help you there. Um, I'm European, 100%. I'm happy. Um, I'll take my adoption status. I pray to my Heavenly Father in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I serve Jesus. I read from my King James Bible. I'm happy where I'm at. Oh, well, you don't know. You're missing certain promises and things that, you know, if you would try to become a Jew and whatever, you'd have these special new things and whatever. I could go around saying the name, the name, you know, Hashem. Uh, no, 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 thank you. Oh, uh, well, you know, if you could do some, you know, become a Jew, then you could say Yeshua HaMashiach and, and you could start to cut out pork from your diet and, and live a kosher life and worship on the Sabbath day. And uh, No, no, no. I've done all the studies and all the research and everything as a Bible-believing preacher, to actually say, no, I don't need to do that stuff. I read my New Testament. Uh, no, thank you. No, not doing it. I'm content with what I have. Uh, and I've done the research. You say, well, you need to study more. I have studied. You need to study more. All right? So uh, you don't agree with me and you want to write nasty little comments? Well, whatever, you have the freedom to do that. Um, if you get too ridiculous, I might delete your comments. If you're trying to make trouble and sowing division and discord among the brethren, well, then I might just kick you off the channel. Um, but you want to come out and prove your foolishness, prove it in the comments section. Put it down there that I don't know what I'm talking about and whatever else. And you haven't watched my studies. You know, you, you really want to prove that I don't know what I'm talking about, then go watch the studies and debunk the studies. Okay? Go through the scriptures. If you don't want to have time for that, whatever, then just... Proclaim your foolishness in the comment section below. You're convinced that you're a Jew. You're the true thing, whatever else. You worship on the Sabbath day. Oh, whatever. Have at it. Enjoy yourself. And I'll enjoy myself. Okay? Um, if you're a newly saved Christian, it's going to take you some time to go through my videos, but you'll be grounded in the scriptures when you do. Okay? I have heard, I've lost count of how many times people have said, Brother Brian, I went to church for 30 years. I'm seminary educated. I went through this and that. And I have never learned the Bible as much, you know, from all that as, as much as I have coming to your ministry and listening to what you say. And I'm going through the scriptures, turning in my Bible, looking it up, checking what you're saying, search the scriptures to see if these things are so. And I've learned a lot. Praise the Lord. That's my hope. That's my prayer. Okay. So that will be it. I've gone off long enough about this study. Um, are there real Jews in this world? Yes. Has the church replaced the Jews? No. No. <laughs> okay. Um, the real Jews, they are, a lot of them are in Israel. And you're going to see as time goes by, God's going to gather the ones that are remaining back to Israel. And then the purification will get started. Okay. Now I'm not saying when all Jews are back, then the purification gets started. I don't know the Lord's timing. I don't know. But the, the purification is going to get started soon because there's a lot of attitude rising up against the Jews. And um, uh, your safety, if you're Jewish, is over there in Israel. So that is going to be it. Thank you very much for watching.